Hello everybody, my name is Raul Hernandez. I'm part of the Cyprus marketing team. And uh, I wanted to show you a solution demo we have uh, based on PSOC 4 L series. PSOC 4 L series is one of the newest additions to the 4200 family we have of PSOC 4. This is a PSOC that's powered by a ARM Cortex M0 CPU. And uh, it's a pretty awesome solution. It has up to 256K of flash, 32K of SRAM. We have a ton of analog and digital programmable blocks. We have up to 98 uh, GPIOs, so DMA, uh, a lot of resources. So what we're going to show you is uh, induction cooktop that's completely powered by one single PSOC 4 L series uh, that's actually driving the user interface and the power behind it to uh, create a fully functional induction cooktop. So some of the features of the induction cooktop include uh, a slick user interface, so this is all powered by Capsons. Okay, so Capsons provides an unprecedented touch performance. We have multiple sensors here, everything from individual buttons to sliders to proximity uh, detection. Capsons is actually uh, operating uh, through a five millimeter overlay and it's completely water tolerant, right? So the whole surface is water tolerant. We have also uh, audio feedback. So all the alarms uh, are powered by a buzzer and a series of safety features that, for example, detect the temperature, detect presence or absence of a pot, and all of these are, are done through hardware, right? None of that is based in software, which makes it extremely reliable and also diminishes the uh, CPU overhead that might uh, take in normal applications. I have here the solution demo, the final uh, product-like solution demo I'm going to show you later. But first I wanted to show you three things. Uh, one is we have the PCB. This is the PCB that's behind the user interface behind this overlay. But I wanted to show you uh, the different things that it has. So we have um, we have eight, seven segment uh, LED displays. We have two eight segment sliders. We have two sets of buttons that are used to control heat, temperature, timer, and on and off. We have a small uh, back LED place that it's going to turn on when we approach our hand. We have proximity, a proximity sensor around the user interfaces. And all of that, this is the back of the, of the board, all of that is powered by one single PSOC 4 L series, right? So we have one part that's doing all the user interfaces, the lighting, the coil control, and the safety features. This is possible not only because we have up to 98 GPIOs, but also because a lot of the safety critical aspects are used through hardware using UDBs. What are some of the things we have? We have the dual coil drive. We have pan detection implemented with uh, programmable analog and digital blocks. And we have some of the safety features, such as over voltage, over current, and temperature protection. So this basically describes the, the digital implementation of the user interface. I also want to show you, this is actually the power stage for the, for the single coil control. This is uh, all the analog power analog that are, are used, and this is actually uh, duplicated twice, one for each of the coils. Um, we're not going to talk a lot about it because it's, uh, it's only the power stage. I do want to point out some of the high-level block diagrams of the function within the PSAC 4 L series. Uh, we have uh, analog comparators that are doing uh, safety features that are comparing voltages between uh, temperature, between the coils, uh, and doing a lot of the monitoring for safety reasons. We also have the TCPWM driving, of course, the, the, the coils. We have uh, SAR ADC uh, checking out and monitoring some of the temperatures within the boards. We have a comparator with the line current, and we have the UDBs or the digital logic that is actually driving a lot of the audio, the digital buzzer, the LEDs, and the proximity control. So that basically explains uh, at a high level the block diagrams in the digital and analog side of the demo. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn uh, the demo on and we're going to do some heating and uh, see how it goes. All right, so what we have here is the block diagram implemented in uh, using PISA Creator of one of the coil drives. What we have here is a comparator that is actually monitoring the voltages on the coils. And as you can see, what happens is we're comparing the voltage. If we see a spike, we're immediately going to stop the PWM of the IGBT-A. All right, this is directly 
wired into the stop signal. Same thing for coil B, right? So we have a comparator that is going to immediately kill IGBT voltages. This is a safety feature that very importantly, it's implemented on hardware, right? So there's no uh, interrupt, there's not a, a polling happening on the CPU. It's basically, if the voltages are uh, meet certain criteria, it's going to shut down the operation. So that's very important. Another of the aspects I wanted to show you include the voltage detect that we have here implemented as well. We have one of the safety features that's implemented on the demo is uh, pan detection, right? So we need to have a pan in order for the coils to be activated, otherwise there's going to be a, a safety hazard. And what we do is we're actually monitoring the coil so that whenever we have a pan on top and ready, then we're operational. If we remove it, uh, it's going to trigger an alarm, and we're going to see that when we turn it on. But right now, what I want to show you is, this is the way it's implemented. We have a couple of uh, LP comparators as well, and uh, this is what's going to actually monitor and detect the pan being present or not. And this is, again, duplicated for uh, coil A and coil B. Finally, we have, and this is a little bit more of a complex diagram, this is the LED control that's done completely in hardware. So what we have here is a series of control registers that are going through a sequencer and a BDC decoder that goes to a lookup table and basically actually driving the LEDs for the seven segment uh, displays. In software, we're only sending uh, what character we want sent and all the decoding and creation of signals for BCD interpretation is done through hardware. So all of this, even though it can be done in regular MCU operation, this is all done through hardware and simplifies a lot, not only the implementation, CPU overhead, and basically debugging of the, of the application. Another smart implementation of this demo is the buzzer. What we have here is, is the way in which we're implementing the buzzer. Uh, it's very simple, but it's actually quite smart. What we have is a clock being driven through the PWM clock buzzer uh, that is then directed through a flip-flop and then to the pin of the buzzer in the PCB. So what we're doing with this is, once we get the signal to get started with the PWM, it generates, based on the clock input, it generates the frequency of the buzzer, but then the same signal stops the buzzer, so it creates only one beep. So instead of having to go through timers, counters, turning on and off PWMs, the on and off is done automatically by the same signal. So it's actually a you know, smart implementation of the buzzer control through hardware. And these are the small tricks that make the PSOC unique. And finally, what we have is the thermistal calculator, which is done through a component. So there's some calculation required, and it's all done and packaged in one of the PSOC creator components. So we've turned on the solution demo. We have the fans operating. It's, this is uh, it's a full solution, so that control, helps control the temperature. And uh, we have the two different digital sides uh, turned on now. First thing I want to show you is uh, proximity. As I mentioned, there's a proximity loop under each of the user interfaces. So whenever I approach my hand, we can see the Cypress logo turn on, right? And this is actually functionally in both, uh, both sides. We have the slider, we have the different buttons. We have the slider. We can actually Put some water. This is a great feature for cleaning, and in most of uh, the applications, users are required to turn the machine off before cleaning because it might detect some false touches. In this case, we can see we can just wipe the whole thing, uh, and no touches are detected uh, because of the water tolerance and water detection. We still have proximity, and let's get started. We're going to do a quick run. We're going to use the heat sensor. And uh, what happens is when I turn it on, there is no pot. And remember, there is, for the safety standpoint, we need to make sure that there's a pot uh, on top of the coil before I turn it on. So if I turn it on, we have an alarm that's telling me there is no pot. So what we can do is we'll just turn it on and we'll place a pot. So now the system has detected there's a pot and it's going to start with the warming. There are three different modes. We can actually adjust heat. Uh, there's a, a 1 to 10 ratio, or we can use a, a temperature loop that's going to be measuring the temperature at the bottom of the, of the pot. So we can just go full blast. One of the features of induction cooktops is the fact that the surface itself doesn't get hot. right? So I'm going to place this piece of paper, and I'm going to put the pot on top so that we see the, the water get heated and boiling over the paper. And I'm going to turn this, this one on. Yeah.
there. So let's give it a minute now. All right, so we have the water boiling. So you can see the sheet is intact, so uh, everything seems to be working okay. Quick things to highlight, the whole solution is implemented in one single piece of 4L series part. We are using uh, digital analog blocks to drive most of the uh, capsins, a lot of the LEDs, buzzer, we're using analog to do monitoring, we're using hardware safety features implemented, and all of this with a single part. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the demo. You have more information available at cypress.com backslash p 4